Hello, recording friends. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Mel, and today we are here with another compound list of books video. I don't know why I phrased it that way, but that is kind of what it is. Today we are here to talk about books I think I will love, but I am super scared, intimidated, and just putting off reading. I don't know if I'm the only one this happens to, and I'm sure I'm not, but for me, it's easier to read books that I think I'll be iffy towards, slash maybe won't like, versus just reading books books that I'm really, really excited to read. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the fact that I continue to build expectations in my head. And then by the point that I get to the book, I typically tend to leave very disappointed. But whatever is causing this mindset, I'm like, no, books are great. Books are escapists and books are chef's kiss. And I shouldn't feel scared or intimidated to read them. However, I do. And so I made a list of 10 different books that I've bought and I've owned for a while that I really think I will love when I do get to them. However, I'm scared. And so we're gonna talk about them. If you've read any of them, let me know down in the comments. And if you have any books that you think you love, but you're also scared to read, also leave them down below in the comments. Share your experience because that way we won't feel so alone if we do, because I'm sure I'm not the only one. But before we get started with the list, I do need to give a massive shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Ana Luisa. Jewelry is my best friend. And I think nobody's a stranger to that. I am always decked up the necklaces, the earrings, the piercings, the rings that I'm not wearing today. So I've betrayed my own fashion sense. And that's essentially where Ana Luisa comes in. They make it super easy for you to build your own jewelry collection. I have been building mine for the past year or so, or like almost a year, which is crazy to think about. And they really do make it easy because not only do they have a wide range of things to choose from, from necklaces, rings, bracelets, earrings, even ear cuffs, they've just got everything. And regardless of what color you like to wear, they have silver pieces, they have gold pieces. I'm personally a gold person myself. They have something for everyone. One of my favorite things about Ana Luisa is that they really do have super high quality pieces for a super affordable price so that you can go on their website and see pieces for as little as $39. And tied to that, you'll be able to make your own collection with high quality pieces with no luxury markups. And not only that, but they use the best noble materials and they have managed to offset 100% of their carbon emissions, starting from how they source their raw materials all the way to the disposal of said pieces. And as for the pieces that I got this month, I am super excited about them. First, we've got the Noel Mythical Blue Ear. I saw these when Noelle announced them and I was like, I need them. I like that it's delicate, but it also just dresses up the ear. A super dainty piece that I've been wanting for a while is just a necklace with the letter M, obviously for me, Mel. And this is something that I can just wear on a daily basis. And last but not least, another necklace that I got so that I could layer the M with it. And that is Vinta Disc, which is a mother of pearl necklace. And I just love how dainty it looks. It's super small. And since Mother's Day is just around the corner, Ana Luisa does have a Mother's Day sale currently. If you buy one piece, you'll get the second one for 40% off. Or if you want to give mom one and then you keep the other, that's also a great choice, me thinks. So I will be leaving my link at the top of the description so that you guys can go check Ana Luisa out, peruse their website, see everything that they have to offer, and potentially get that special someone in your life a little something, or yourself, because I am always an advocate for treat yourself. All right, you guys, so let's get started with the books that I'm scared to read, because, uh, it, I mean, it's 10 of them. I could really be making a larger list than that, but I didn't want to overwhelm y'all with this list. So let's talk about the 10. So the first one is one of the books of the hour. Everybody has been reading this and just seeing everybody love this as much as they have, especially after hearing people not really love book one, is only making me even more intimidated to actually read this. And that is The Viscount Who Loved Me. This is the second book in the Bridgerton series. Obviously, season two has come out. I have yet to watch it even because I want to read the book first. So that's how this is going. So I just need to read this. I recently read my first historical romance, which also I think the idea of reading a historical romance was in and out of itself very intimidating. Even though I knew it's got every element that I typically like in a romance. It's got the angst and the banter, and it's got that standoffishness a lot of the time, but it's also got that playful nature of the era. So I really do like watching them at least. So when I think about it, it's like, why wouldn't I like reading them? And so in this one, we follow Anthony who is Daphne's brother. Daphne is the protagonist in book one, The Duke and I. And Anthony is pretty much like a really sought after bachelor. He is the one person they have not managed to reel in and actually get married. He is incredibly elusive with the topic of marriage, except that it might just happen in this book because he has chosen a wife now. And I do believe there's like a love triangle element to this where there's like a pair of sisters and then Anthony involved. I don't know exactly how this is going to play out. I've read quotes from this 
this. I've seen this everywhere. Every time people talk about it, I'm like, that sounds good. That sounds Oh, good. You guys are going to laugh at me for this one because this is the second book, not technically, but still the second book in a series that I very much enjoyed the first book for. And I still haven't read this. I started this and it's sort of destiny. So I literally started this. I got 10 pages in. Do you think I continued? Clearly not because bookmark is still right there. And so I really need to get into this. The audiobooks for the Witcher series are phenomenal. And so I know that if I just wanted to pop this on as an audiobook and kind of have it in the background, or just read along physically with the audio, I could do it. Ask me what's stopping me. Nothing. Now, I know I've talked about this before. Let me just give you a synopsis for the sake of giving you a synopsis. But in the Witcher series, we follow Geralt of Rivia, who is a witcher. The witcher is a bounty hunter of sorts, which hunts evil, magical beings, really disgusting, magical creatures. And the reason why I think Geralt in particular is such a compelling character is because of his moral compass. And I know I've said this before, but his moral compass is so attractive as a character, not attractive, in like the aesthetic way, but attractive as in I like to read about it because it's a very compelling narrative, a very compelling personality to read about and from. And I quite like that. I also like that despite this being an epic fantasy, epic fantasy, adult fantasy, interchangeably so, I like that it doesn't have a super complex magic system. It's super easy to follow. It's just something that you can truly immerse yourself in and not really think about the ins and outs of, oh my God, how does this work? Or how does that work? There is lore, obviously. And there are rules of magic, however, it's not something incredibly intricate to the point where you'd be confused. And so there's nothing stopping me. Now this one, this one, this is something I really should just send Erin a picture of. She will literally convince me to read this in a heartbeat. She's also the person who got me this book. And that's The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. I feel like for some reason, if I have the audiobook for a book, it'll make it less intimidating. So if you've read this, is the audiobook any good? Should I get the audiobook? Is there an audiobook? I should have probably looked that up. And so we follow Tao in the bigger scheme of things. We have a world that has been ruled by war. This nation has been riddled by war for hundreds of years. And there are the very gifted few who are very, very powerful. Some women are able to summon dragons and some men are able to turn into real big, fierce, intimidating warriors. And Tao's journey, based on what I have heard, is super interesting because he goes down this very unthinkable path that once he goes down into, he can't come back from. And so I find that super interesting. I really like that element of women are the ones that summon the dragons. Are the men the ones that turn into dragons? I feel like I've heard that before somewhere. I may be mistaken, don't quote me on that. I am really interested to see the magic system in this, how things are going to play out. I've heard that this book is incredibly bingeable too. Like once you start reading this, it's super hard to put it down. And so I know once I get into the thick of it, into the thick of it, I am going to have a good time, hopefully. I mean, hopefully so. But I feel like typically when I'm in the middle of a book, it's like, if it's good, I can't put it down. Solitaire is another one that I am just super intimidated by and I want to love this so bad you guys this is story springs story now if you guys have watched other of my videos then you know how much I love heartstopper I literally also have a vlog coming up in a few days that is literally going to feature me rereading the entirety of heartstopper and I just love that series so much Tori is Charlie's brother who's one of the protagonists in heartstopper and solitaire is her book she is hands down one of my favorite characters in heartstopper she's got a super dry humor but she is super super supportive at the same time, super loyal, super protective of her brother. And every time she comes up anywhere, I really just want to know more about Tori. And as I was reading Nick and Charlie, which is a novella for Heartstopper, I found myself wanting to read this even more. In fact, I think Nick and Charlie is like Solitaire 1.5. Listen to this though. My name is Tori Spring. I like to sleep and I like to blog. Last year I had friends. Things were very different, I guess, but that's all over now. Now there are Solitaire and Michael Holden. I don't know what Solitaire are trying to do and I don't don't care about Michael Holden. I really don't. That's literally the perfect synopsis. It's giving you nothing, but it's also giving you enough at the same time for you to be interested. And I just need to get off my ass and read this, honestly, because Alice Oseman has yet to disappoint me. One of the best books I read last year was All's Well by Mona Awa. And this book, Bunny, <laughs> intimidates the fuck out of me. It's probably one of the shortest books I own. So it, it's surprising that this tiny book is making me as intimidated as I am. The way that I've 
heard people talk about this. It's like very akin to Heathers, which I absolutely adore. I've been in the musical for Heathers here in Panama. I've watched the movie and I've loved it. I've watched the musical and I've loved it. And so I just need those vibes. And supposedly I'm gonna get them with this book. And I know we follow Samantha who is a scholarship student and she literally does not wanna hang out with everybody based on the synopsis. Like she is just fine and dandy, good and dandy with her own company, with her own brain. She don't want nothing more. <laughs> she doesn't want anything else. And she gets to observe this group of ladies calling themselves the bunnies who all act and speak like one, which sounds very spooky, which also sounds like the Heathers. And then one day everything changes when she receives an invitation to the bunny club, also known as the smut salon. And then everything just spirals down from there. And I've heard that this is one of the weirdest books people have ever read. It's so good. Like I literally see people making this their brand book, like very heavily. And I need to know why this book is so good. Also one of my favorite books of last year, you'd remember if you've watched the video, is actually La Sombra del Viento by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. And I bought this fully intending on reading it right away. And I haven't yet. This is El Juego del Ángel. This is the second book in the series. Obviously, copies in Spanish. Also think it's really cool that although the series does have like a very common thread, which is the Cementerio de los Libros Olvidados, Perdidos, literally a library. I like that that's the common thread between the books, but we essentially follow different characters, where at least in this one, we follow a different set of characters. And I love the synopsis too. It literally sounds phenomenal. We follow an author in the 20s in Barcelona, and we particularly follow him as he receives a very odd offer with a very large sum to write a book like never written before and something that could quite literally change his life. And that's it. That's all I know. But it sounds so good. And based on the first one, his writing style was just beautiful. And I think he really pushes the boundaries of reality while still being centered in reality. It was such a weird reading experience because as I was reading it, I was like, this is, this has got to be a magical realism book. Like this has got to be fantasy of some sort. And uh, lo and behold, it isn't. But it definitely felt like that. It just gives you a very magical feeling. And I really want to read this to experience that as well. Now, this is a book I don't think I've talked about in my channel, but I've owned it since December, I think. And that is The Helm of Midnight. I bought this because of Reagan. I'm not gonna lie to you. And I know Reagan loved this and I know Reagan gave it five stars. And yet I still haven't read this, even though I trust her. A legendary serial killer stalks the streets of a city shrouded in darkness and secrets. And the cover though, I really like this cover. It's like giving me, it's just giving. <laughs> In a daring and deadly heist, thieves have made away with an artifact of terrible power. Made by a master craftsman, it is imbued with the spirit of a monster from history, a serial murderer who terrorized the city. Now the monster is loose once more, killing from beyond the grave. And now Krona Hervath and her fellow regulators enter the mind of madness to stop this insatiable killer while facing the terrible truths left in its wake. It sounds phenomenal, and I just have to trust Reagan in this because this is the reason why I bought it. I think I might include this in my high fantasy reading vlog that I've been planning for a while. I just have yet to conclude on what books I'm gonna include on there, but I feel like this might be a good one because of its length, because it's short, it sounds good, and it looks good. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, Gallant is intimidating the hell out of me. It's got a component that I really like, which is shadow magic of sorts, but I still, I'm scared. I think I'm scared mostly because my story with Schwab has been very, just very tumultuous tumultuous. I have a very tumultuous relationship with her works. And so this one does come from experience mostly, but I feel like I need to look past that and I just need to give her another chance to potentially prove herself once more because she's done that with Addie and she's done that with Vicious. And we follow Olivia Pryor who has no idea really where she comes from. Her family background is pretty much a mystery to her except that she receives a letter and she ends up going to Gallant, which is her family home. And there she finds out the truth of her family, her family's powers, and she will be riddled with enough questions and with with enough pressure to have to make a decision as to where she stands at her father's side, which is kind of like the evil side, or if she will stand against him. And it's also a pretty book. Like, it's really stunning to look at. Will I like it though? Stay tuned and find out because I don't know. Another intimidating book for me, and that is Plain Bad Heroines. I have heard so many mixed reviews about this, but the cover is stunning. I just think it's something that I'm really, really gonna vibe with. It's long, and typically when dark academias are long, it inspires 
a sense of trust in me while still being really intimidating. I think it inspires a sense of trust within me because typically gothic literature tends to be very slow. Then it also intimidates me because what if I end up reading a really freaking long book that I'm not gonna like? It's intimidating for that reason. And I know this book also contains a sapphic romance and the premise of the story begins with Flo and Clara who are both students at this really prestigious all-female academy if I'm not mistaken and they enter a relationship, they fall madly in love with each other and then one day they both turn up dead. After that, three more deaths followed, I believe in the same nature. They were literally killed by wasps which doesn't sound very fun and after that the school was closed. And this is where it gets particularly cool because we follow a young crew of actresses who are now entering the school to film something related to this, I believe. Are they filming a documentary? I don't, I don't know exactly what they're filming. I just know. I just know. They are now coming into the school and past and present will start to blur in a way where things will start to get really confusing. And I really want to love this. I really want to like this. And I just feel like I need to find the right opening for this. But honestly, doesn't that sound cool? I feel like I've never really seen a concept like that within Dark Academia. It sounds top tier. Please be top tier. Me wants pretty book to be top tier. And last but not least, and maybe a book you guys wouldn't have guessed I'd have put on this list, and that is the plot. I don't know who was expecting this, but the way that I've been wanting to reach for this book, and every time I look at it, I'm like, I don't want to hate you. And it's literally the concept of this that I find so interesting. It's also super short, so I feel like it could be a really good read. We follow Jacob, who used to be a writer, and now it's been years since he's last published something, and now he's teaching a third-rate MFA program, and it seems that that's kind of like the last thing he wants to be doing. And then one day, one of his students, Evan, comes to him saying that he does not need him in order for his plot and his story to be good. And Jacob really doesn't think that this plot is gonna be any good up until he hears it. And he's just dreadfully awaiting this book to be published and then Evan dies. And Jacob will do the unthinkable and I think he gonna steal the plot and I think that gonna steal the plot and I think it's gonna cause issues and I think it's gonna get crazy. And it just sounds so good. When I read the synopsis overall, which mind you, it's like freaking long as hell, it sounds amazing. And so I need to, it's really not that short. It's like 300 pages. I need to read this. And those are all of the books that I think I think I'm going to love, but I am super scared to read. Again, sound off in the comments. Let me know if you're the same way. If it's easier for you to maybe read something that you think you're going to dislike versus something that you think you're going to like. How does your brain operate? Just tell me. Just literally let me know in the comments because I'm sure I'm not the only one. If I'm not the only one and if you do experience this too, again, let me know down in the comments. If you have any books that you particularly feel intimidated by but that you think you will personally love, have you read any of these? Let a girl know. If you didn't like it, <laughs> Maybe don't tell me because I don't know how much that's going to tell. But if you've read any of these and you think I'm going to like them, let a girl know. If you've reached the end of the video, let's leave some bunny emojis down below in honor of one of the books that I'm incredibly intimidated by. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. I am constantly uploading videos that I am sure you do not want to miss. And if you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon called Ourselves Citadel that is always linked down below alongside all of my social media. Thank you once more to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget that they've got a Mother's Day sale happening right now, meaning that if you buy one piece, your second one will be 40% off. So you can get that mom figure in your life a little something or maybe get a little something for yourself, whichever swings your way. I will be leaving the link for that down in the description. I love you guys so, so much and I shall see you on the next one. Bye guys.